Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna be talking about my own personal pre-loved deal breakers. These are things on the pre-loved market that I will refuse no matter how good the price is, no matter what. So I know a lot of people when they shop on the pre-loved market, they like to have th their things brand new, pristine, not even breathed on. And because I work in the industry and because I'm around the, I'm around this stuff all day, I feel like I've built up like a like a bigger, better, more robust tolerance for a couple of nicks and dents and scratches and flaws. So that is to say that there are a couple of things that are no-goes for me in my, uh, for me to add something to my own wardrobe personally. If you're watching this, you probably love the pre-love market as much as I do. Comment down below what your deal breakers are, what will have you stop in your tracks and just discontinue even looking at the item. Uh, in the meantime, here are some of mine. So if you're new to my channel, um, hi, my name is Catherine. I talk all about the luxury resale industry because I've worked in this industry since 2014. I, here I give a whole bunch of info and, and insights into the pre-loved market and industry, tips that you can use to make luxury attainable, as well as better buying habits um, to protect your resale value. Um, if that is something you would like to see more of, don't forget to subscribe for new videos. Give this one a thumbs up if you like it, and let's get started. First and foremost, we're gonna get this out of the way the number one thing that is an absolute deal breaker for me in pre-loved luxury is counterfeits. I am anti-counterfeit 100%. Um, I do not support counterfeiting. I think that while not every budget is necessarily um, ready to spend to drop hundreds or thousands of dollars on handbags, I think that there is something nice and well-designed and practical and beautiful available at most any budget. And maybe like and I think that it's okay to not be able to have a Chanel in your wardrobe. I think it's okay to not have a Louis Vuitton in your wardrobe if that's not something that is attainable for you in that moment. However, I just don't think counterfeits are the answer and I think that you can do better. If there's something out there that I want and I am unable to afford, then I'll get something else. <laughs> it's really not that big of a deal. Um, if you want to have a look at some of my look for less videos, there definitely are many, many ways to reach a certain like design aesthetic or certain vibe that you're going for without breaking the bank necessarily. Um, I've made a playlist of those and I'll leave that link down below if you want to check it out. But you know, there are just, there are other, there are other fish in the sea. There are other handbags out there and there are just definitely other ways to um, showcase your style without counterfeiting. Next up on the pre-love market is a complete deal breaker for me. I'm not in a place where I'm willing to pay a premium for something that is in high demand. Um, what I will say about like my taste and my style in general is that I just don't really go for very hyped and very highly sought after pieces anyway. So that kind of makes it easy for this to not be so big of a problem for me. If I really, really want something, I will take the time to try and like scour the internet or whatever resources I have available to find it. I'm not in a, in a place where I want to be paying personal shoppers or paying like you know premiums out on the resale market for for uh, designer items. It's not so difficult for me because that's just not really what my style and what my what my vibe calls for in the moment. Um, I'm not really aggressively trendy and those high premium prices tend to coincide with what is like super mega trending on all the influencers um, at the moment. Like for me, if I really want something, no matter what the price is or no matter how popular it is, if it's only available at a premium, I'll just wait. <laughs> the price for most things does tend to go down over time. And if by that time I find something at a price point that I am comfortable with, that's how I know that I'll, that I still really want it. Like I'm pretty patient when it comes to most of my luxury purchases. Most, not all. A sign of me actually wanting and loving something is being able to lust after it for a prolonged period of time. Um, I don't have to be in, I don't have to be in the top tier of trends in the moment. And that is very much reflected in what I dis in what I end up um, adding to my wardrobe in the end. So for me, I'm not into the hyped paying a premium game and it's it's a deal breaker absolutely not <laughs> anything that is supposed to have a serial number needs to have that serial number and i would prefer that it be intact now the thing is that i 
adore shopping vintage. I love vintage. I love shopping vintage. And over time, especially with like, over time we think about Chanel bags, um, Louis Vuitton bags, certain uh, certain ones from Gucci and, and the list goes on. Um, over time, the interior of these bags can disintegrate. By no means am I talking about like a bag that's five years old. That should absolutely not be happening. I'm talking about things once they get to the 20, 30 plus year mark. Uh, sometimes with that goes the date stamp or serial number or code. Um, just over the, over the course of time, especially with Chanel, like they'll be printed on tags and they can get ripped, they can get torn, they can get like worn away. Uh, they can come out in, man, in, in many cases. Now I am definitely, because I do this professionally, I can still authenticate them. But if that serial number isn't intact or is detached completely, that is going to affect the resale value if I ever decide to sell a bag. So I don't know that I would say it's a deal breaker necessarily because if I really fall in love with a piece, then I might consider it. But it would be it would be something that I'm all but married to in my wardrobe. And um, that is, I very rarely try to go in thinking that I'm never ever going to sell a bag. The cards, however, are not are, are not a deal breaker for me. Obviously, it is great for it to have more accessories as opposed to less. For the past, I don't know, 35 or so years, the bags have come with cards. Um, a lot of the designers are beginning to phase out those um, those cards. These, these serial numbers are now being replaced with, by microchips. Uh, these microchips are used to track um, are used to track the bags and where they go, where they go, the ownership of them, etc. It actually falls in line kind of with like that whole blockchain thing that I'm not entirely sure if I'm understanding correctly, but it seems like it runs in parallel. I don't know. Any thoughts? Do I sound like I have any idea what I'm talking about? Probably not. So that is something that they are implementing now and that means that the cards and serial numbers have fallen by the wayside. I think that, you know, over time, uh, it's going to throw the resale market in kind of in kind of a frenzy to, you know, authentic to, to authenticate things on the secondhand market. And um, unless they make something that is like legible for consumers. I don't know how that's going to play out necessarily. I'm not sure and I'm really curious to see what the future holds. So regarding the serial cards on uh, brands like Chanel, I will buy a bag without one. I know a lot of people will not, but you know, I just understand that over the course of decades, <laughs> people lose track of certain accessories. I just find that if you are interested in a bag that is over 20 years old, um, you, you realistically you should be negotiable on whether or not it comes with the with the serial card because otherwise I just find it to be a little bit unrealistic just like some level of wear and even some types of odors if a bag is more than 20 years old like you have to you have to be understanding that there are certain things that come along with this age just like all of us and you know what? And if you are just absolutely unwilling to buy a Chanel bag without a serial card, then perhaps vintage is just not for you. And that's totally fine. Talked briefly about odors. There are certain odors that are absolutely a line in the sand that I will not cross. First and foremost, excessive, heavy, and strong perfume. Ugh, no. I've gotten better over, uh, over the course of years, but I used to be really allergic to the smell of perfume now i found a couple that i like and i'm actually i'm actually it is a new development in my like allergy situation that i'm able to burn a couple of like certain types of candles in my home um that's really great and something i'm really enjoying but as far as like certain scents and certain fragrances i can't take it i can't accept it they give me really really bad headaches perfumes are meant to like latch on to your body like to your skin and while that fragrance does fade over time um it is intended to like like latch on or stick on to your skin i need you guys to remember that leather is skin and that perfume is going to just cling onto it except that remember that us people out here with our skin that we're spraying perfume on i assume that most of you bathe regularly so you're actually washing that off the same is not true of your designer bags so my solution for that is number one try not to just like douse yourself in perfume just as a general rule i think that would just be a better thing to do otherwise like for a variety of reasons and number two don't carry your perfumes inside of your bags 
that is just a recipe for disaster. I have one perfume that actually came with a tra with a travel size, and that little thing is made of glass. 99.9% .9 of the time that you get a really, uh, a really strong perfume smell, it's because the perfume bottle broke inside of the bag. And that's just so easily avoidable by not traveling around with your perfume. Now, once again, I'm like, do you really need to re-up the perfume every couple of hours? Probably not. Less is more. <laughs> Be very careful. And I would say just abstain from holding perfume bottles inside of your designer bags because you're only asking for a problem. Same goes for hand creams and lotions. I would say that the hand creams and lotions is worse. Um, these tend to have like closures and clasps on the bottles that are not as secure even as the perfume. And you are just pretty much asking for your lotion or your hand cream to spill out inside of your bag. And that smell is just gonna sit inside of there and like, like just blah, blah. There's something about the way scents work with creams and emollients that just really locks them in to whatever surface they're going into. I don't like you guys, I know there are a lot of perfume channels out there. If any of you are watching, then maybe you have some, some more like informed details on that and I'd love to hear them. But um, don't carry perfume, don't carry lotions. I know I've been saying that to you guys for five years and I'm gonna keep saying it, don't do it because that's one of my deal breakers. If there is a super strong perfume or lotion odor, I am out, I'm out, take it away from me. Nope, nope. And since we're on the subject of odors, um, I'm gonna go with smoke. So there is cigarette smoke and there's also this other smoke. I don't know exactly what the AdSense guidelines are in regards to this stuff right here, but the smell of both of these things they just are so overpowering and so unpleasant <laughs> and they linger. If you smoke in your home or in your car, everything that is in your home and in your car is going to smell like that, including your handbags. And that is just going to make them that much more un unappealing to a potential buyer like myself. So cigarette smoke is a smell that I had to live with as um, as a child. I chose deliberately to not bring it with me into adulthood. So no thank you. I cannot overstate that I'm someone that's so much more lenient than everyone else. And even I'm like, nope, nope, get it. Take it, take it. I don't want it. Bye. Goodbye. Next up on my list is cracked canvas or even pleated canvas. I really love the coated canvas from a lot of the designers, uh, Louis Vuitton and Gucci being two of my favorites. So it is natural canvas that is coated with a plastic or man-made material. And over time, it can break down, it can dry out, and it can crack and it can peel. For me, that's a deal breaker. I know that Louis Vuitton, for example, has a rule that any bag that has cracked canvas cannot be repaired because it's not like you can just patch it. You'd have to just get a completely new piece of canvas and that's just not something that their repair services are um, are able or willing to do. For me, where there's smoke, there's fire. If it's cracked now, like it's not like it's gonna get better over time, it's only gonna get worse. Um, so I just feel like it opens you up to a problem. Cracked canvas is a no for me. Patent leather looks so beautiful when it's new. Um, it just, you can see that the colors on it are so vibrant and so beautiful. You can, it like, sh it can like shout from across the room and it's waterproof it has so many great things going for it i could be i could be persuaded into a dark color or like a black or dark metallic trust me but light color patent leather it, it is just a disaster over time and it really is going to affect your future resale value if you ever do decide to sell something so number one what everyone is afraid of and rightfully so is color transfer um color transfer in patent leather is when the plastic coating that is over the leather soaks up whatever ink or dyes it comes in contact with i've seen it where uh something was sitting on top of like a newspaper or it was either sitting on top of a newspaper or like it was in a box that was filled with newspaper as like stuffing and you could literally see the newspaper printing on the bag and like I wanted to cry for that woman. So sometimes you look at these bags and you think that these people are just like negligent. It is, it's just really is just a flaw in the material. I don't know why in 2022 we have not figured out or solved the patent leather problem, but the patent leather problem persists. Um, I've seen it all. If you have a, a patent leather bag on the shelf and anything is resting on it, even lightly, even for like a couple of, even for like an less than an hour, I have seen I've seen the color transfer bloom on it. 
As a matter of fact, here we go. Here's a horror story. I have seen patent leather Chanel flat bags when closed, the patent leather underneath the flap transferred on from itself. Transferred from itself. Now explain to me how you transfer from your own self. Also over time it yellows. So a lot of the time you see um, like a really brightly colored bag and it's one color on the outside and then on the inside it's a much cooler tone. That's because like over the course of time the bag yellowed. So I would say that sometimes it yellows out pretty evenly so you can't tell, but uh, so you can't tell until it come until you uh, come in contact with a piece that hasn't been like hit by sunlight. And I don't even, at this point, I don't even know like what the problem is, like if it's a problem of storage, if it's a problem of climate or like humidity or anything like that. I just know that these bags are way too expensive and they ruin so easily and it could, something really horrible could happen and it'd be no fault of your own. I Thank you. Mm -mm. I, I admire from afar. Nope. Okay, the last one on my list is going to be folding, creasing, and like obvious structure loss. This comes from improper storage. For the love of God, when you store your bags, be sure and stuff them. Be sure that they don't like fall into a box and get smushed. Um, be sh like just there are just certain ways to take care of them. And I actually once again did a video that you can see more tips on how to store your bags. I'll leave that link down below as well as in the info cards up here, one of these corners. Uh, be sure to check those out because I do put in little extras and little related topics. I definitely go for more structured bags like aesthetically, but one of the reasons I ended up gravita gravitating towards that is because I saw that over time the more structured bags just looked better and kept their condition a lot better than slouchier ones and it just so happens to coincide that what I also find a uh, more aesthetically pleasing is better in the long term for condition so folding creasing um, obvious structure loss that's going to come generally from improper storage or from a bag just being like more slouchy and that's just not something I like uh, so what I do for my bags is I make sure that they are stuffed properly when it does come time to store them I make sure that they're standing uh, they're standing on my shelf upright as you can see behind me as well when I do carry them anything that doesn't doesn't maintain a structure on its own I make sure to use a base shaper or a purse organizer on the inside. Folding and all of that folding and creasing, what comes with that, especially when you get into canvas, is the cracking and the, and the tears and the holes in the canvas that are not repairable that I talked about earlier in this video. I definitely do have some level of understanding for a little bit of corner wear. Um, corner wear for me isn't a deal breaker just because I understand that it really is inevitable. Um, any bag that gets used is susceptible to have corner wear. Now I have to say, if if I do say so myself, I think my bags overall have been spared because I just care for them very well, but I would I would definitely continue to pursue a bag on the pre-love market if it had a couple of like nicks and dents and maybe uh, um, spots from dirt or staining on the corners. Also, uh, I know a lot of people like to only go for bags with feet, and I'll be honest with you, um, uh, having metal feet on the bottom of your bags doesn't do as much as you'd hope. Um, I find that a lot of the time they kind of exacerbate the problem of corner wear because the feet raise up the bag in the corners, but then the part that spills over the corners tends to slouch even more than it would. Uh, so I think that corner wear kind of is inevitable um, with certain styles of bag and the feet don't really help as much as you think they do. I'm also pretty okay with hardware scratches, especially once again, I, I talked about this earlier. With vintage, I think that we need to be a little bit more appreciative and understanding of the age of some of the bags the fact that they're able to hold up over 20 30 and 40 plus years I think is an incredible testament to the quality uh, of the materials and craftsmanship back then so uh, I'm definitely willing to um, accept a bit of tarnishing on certain things and hardware scratches I will say though that the older bags the ones that were, that were made before the mid 2000s they tended to be um, made of uh, just better metal materials the ones of today are, are coated in in metallic 
something i'm not exactly sure what it is but uh louis vuitton for example used to be made uh, of, of um, brass and chanel used to be plated 24 karat gold and i'm sure that's uh that's also true for other designers i am more accepting of tarnishing on vintage bags than i am necessarily on the newer styles uh the newer styles when they tarnish it's because they're made of cheaper materials whereas the older ones it like can be polished and buffed out but as far as scratches i think that to a point as long as long as like one of my, one of my old co-workers said as long as like they didn't break dance onto the belt <laughs> onto onto a belt buckle then it's typically okay um i'm not really a stickler for plastic for um for metal to be completely brand new and shiny and honestly if i'm being honest too new of hardware especially on something like a belt if it's like too shiny and too new i'm a little bit put off by that is that weird as I said, I'm definitely more accepting than your average bear when it comes to the when it comes to pre-loved and vintage. But um, I just do think, especially for vintage, that with shopping vintage, I think it needs to come a level of understanding. And um, shopping vintage and shopping pre-loved is definitely not going to be for everyone. Um, if you want something brand new and pristine, there definitely are things out there. But it's going to be much much harder to be satisfied with your purchase um, unless. You sort of like manage your expectations. <laughs> definitely let me know what your deal breakers are um, down below in the comments. Um, I definitely want to chat about that and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!